and your neighbor. How often has this homey word appeared in print? How many poems and songs and prose have been inspired by that next door neighbor? How often is it mentioned in the scriptures, both in the Old and the New Testaments? Thou shalt love thy neighbor. Yes, that's an old familiar quotation, isn't it? And a mighty good one, too. And whether it be amidst the hustle and bustle of the big city, or in the quiet serenity of pastoral splendor, or the quaintness of some small town, there are people who do love their neighbors. One may find them any place, in any street, in any walk of life. Folks like the Smiths next door, or some fellow like our mailman, old Lem Clumpet. Hi, Mr. Clumpet. Well, hello there, Bobby. How's the little man? I'm okay. Any mail for us? Well, now, I wouldn't be surprised if I had. But couldn't give it to you no harm, my boy. Can't break regulations, you know. But wait, somewhere here in this bag of mine, <laughs> I could... Oh, boy, thanks. Mm. Whee, Pepperman. Your favorite, ain't it? Yeah, how'd you know? Oh, mailman gets to know a lot of things, son. Yes, sir, he. Don't take long for a mailman to know more about the folks on his route than what they know themselves. How'd you get to know that? Well, just a matter of keeping your eyes open and your mouth closed, son. Well, look here. Mighty pretty Hadley roses, ain't the boy? Sure are. They're my mom's favorite roses. I'm saving money to get a rose tree, just like this one. Young man, if you've got any money to save, you better give it to your mother. Perhaps it'll help her to pay. I reckon here's some tax bills you was waiting for, Mr. Cogswell. Uh, it's about time. This mail's getting slower and slower, old. Look at that. Another increase. Year after year, the same story. Taxes and more taxes. A man saves and scrimps. I buy a few little pieces of income property for my old age, and what happens? I'm taxed to death. Mm, yeah, it ain't worth it, I reckon. Why don't you give your houses away to your tenants and uh, let them worry about paying the taxes? Yeah. That mean old crab, I don't like him. You oughtn't to talk like that, Bobby. Matter of fact, you ought to feel sorry for Mr. Cogswell. Me? Why, he's rich. Yes, that's just the point. See, when a man allows his worldly goods to destroy his peace of mind, he's to be pitied. Well, I still don't like him. Well, I'm surprised, son. Ain't you already learned that you ought to love your neighbor? Miss Wingate said a new family moved in here last week. Well, it ain't exactly a family, son. It's a lone bachelor from Chicago. Studying to be an insurance broker. He's got a heap of kinfolk and friends back there, but he had to come out here for his health. What does he look like? Well, don't write no, son. I ain't never laid eyes on him yet. Then how'd you know all that about him? Oh, just keep my eyes open, that's all. You know, sometimes I add two and two and get five. But most times I get the right answer. Yes, sir. I... Oh, good morning. Good morning. What a lovely day. You poor man carrying that heavy bag on a day like this. You must be all tuckered out. Me tuckered out? No, ma'am. Don't ever get near as tired as lots of folks but ain't got nothing to do. Oh, did you know that our new landlord, Mr. Clogswell, has rented the place next door? Did he now? Well, I hadn't noticed. Oh, Mr. Clumpet, you're so cute. You hadn't noticed. Why, I just saw you delivering the people's mail. What's their name? Well, I don't rightly know, ma'am. You see, me, I, I don't pay much attention to names. 
only addresses. Uh, now, why don't that landlord fix up this step? Don't know how many times I've reminded Mr. Cogswell about it. Hi, Mom. See what Mr. Clampett gave me? Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Good morning. Morning, ma'am. There you be. Yeah, it's a nice day, isn't it? Is this all? That's all, ma'am. You know, ma'am, I just remember a little saying that goes like this. Yesterday is but a dream. Tomorrow only a vision. But today, well lived, makes every yesterday a dream, a happiness, and every tomorrow a vision, a hope. Say, that's good and very appropriate. Did you make it up yourself? Oh, I ain't that smart, Miss Palmer. No, I, I only try to live by it, that's all. Well, good day, ladies. Bye. Oh, that, that, hang that step. How are things, Madge? Oh, same old thing. Nothing but bills. Oh, take it easy, honey. Something better will turn up. I simply have to find myself some other type of work. No matter how many hours I spend at that sewing machine, I still can't get ahead. Wait a minute. Here. No, thanks, Brenda. I owe you too much as it is. Oh, stop that nonsense. Well, all right, if that's the way you feel. But look, Madge, isn't it about time you came out of your shell? Meaning what? So you're a widow. Does that mean you have to bury yourself in the past? Why don't you think of the future? Look. Look at your boy tagging along after that old mailman. Madge, did it ever occur to you that every child needs a father? Yes, I know, but it's such a dangerous step to take. What if Bobby didn't like the man I was to choose? Well, why not, if he's the right one? Look, honey, there's a social at the community center every Tuesday. Yes, I know, but I haven't anything dressy enough to wear. Oh, I have enough for the both of us. Now, look, why don't you come along with me next Tuesday? Just for a change. Well, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Now, if you're looking for something, there's nothing doing today, son. Scat. Hey. Come to think of it, <clears throat> maybe I got something left over from yesterday. Huh? Let's see now. Yeah, here it is. Bubble gum. Thanks, Mr. Clumpet. Can sure. I walk with you? Sure thing, sure thing. Boy, this new neighbor sure gets a lot of mail, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, but that don't ever take the place of real friendly neighbors, son. You know, a fella can get a lot of mail and still be mighty lonesome. You can say that again. A stranger sure can get mighty lonesome. Any mail? Yeah. Is that all? Um, there, this here is uh, Bobby Miller, uh, one of your neighbors. Uh, Bobby, this is Mr. Uh, oh, what's your name? You kidding? Didn't you just hand me this? Oh, that? Oh, well, I, I seldom pays any attention to names. Uh, only addresses. Oh. Hiya, Bobby. My name's Cliff Gilmore. Glad to know you, sir. Me too. You play baseball? Yeah, sure. Well, swell. Let's get together someday, huh? So long, Bobby. I'll see you. Seems like a right nice enough fella, don't he, Bobby? Yeah, I like him. You really think he's lonesome like he says? Well, I don't rightly know, son. <laughs> but if he's lonesome, he ain't gonna be that way very long. Come in. Hi, honey. Here's a 
couple of old dresses I'm throwing away. I thought maybe you could get some use out of them. Old dresses? Well, they don't fit me anymore. Hey, that ought to be just right for tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Well, that's right. Have you forgotten the social? Oh, Brenda, I can't go. Oh, but you've got to. It'll do you good. Oh, Brenda, I'm sorry. It was sweet of you to go to all this trouble, but I can't go. Oh, I wonder who that is. Oh, probably a magazine peddler. Oh. Good afternoon. My name's Gilmore. I'm a neighbor of yours. The postman left us at my place by mistake. And... Oh, that's odd. He left one of your letters here. Well, maybe the heat's got him. <laughs> the old boy's getting balmy. I, too, have a letter for you. I'm Brenda Palmer. We seem to be playing games. Yours, I believe. Oh, oh, oh. Thanks. <laughs> Won't you come in? Thank you. Don't run away. I'll get yours. This is almost like exchanging visiting cards, isn't it? Well, it's a very pleasant diversion for me. I must remember to thank the mailman for his mistake. Oh. Here you are. Thank you. You know, that, that mailman's wasting talent. He should be chairman of a Love Thy Neighbor committee. Oh. <laughs> well, should we settle all this confusion over a cup of tea? Wonderful. Hi. All right. <laughs> and don't you think she'd look gorgeous in this? I sure do. Thanks. There, that settles it. Oh, Brenda, I can't possibly go. What about Bobby? I can't take him along. And he's got to be in bed by 8 o'clock so he can be at school in the morning. Don't worry about that. I'll take care of Bobby for you. Well, that settles that. Oh, I don't think it's right for me to accept Mr. Gilmore's offer. After all, he... Don't be ridiculous. Bobby and I will get along fine. Oh, I'll get it, Madge. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm here to see Mrs. Miller. Well, you... uh, she's not available at the moment. Miss Palmer, I'll thank you not to prevaricate. Who's a liar? I said she wasn't available. Well, let's not quibble over words. If you... Look, Angel Face, be nice and come back tomorrow, huh? Miss Palmer, I'm accustomed to collecting my rents on time. Mrs. Miller's is one month overdue, and I'm not leaving until I see her. Pardon me. Therefore, if you will kindly tell... Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Cogswell. If you'll just give me a little more time. Mrs. Miller, I'll give you till the end of the week to either pay your rent or give up the place. Do you mean you'd make her move? Well, if you do, you can find yourself a new tenant to take my place, well, too. Well, Miss Palmer, I got my obligations to meet. I can't carry on my business. Oh! Oh, oh Cogswell! Oh, what happened? Oh, 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 my leg. Wow! Oh. Well, oh, I guess that's what some folks should call poetic justice. My hip. Here, let me help you out. Oh, oh. He fell on the broken step. Oh, I, I think I broke something. Oh, oh. oh my. Well, well, that's what I'm mistaken, which I don't think oh. I am. You have. Oh, this is terrible. Oh. Better leave him here and call a doctor. Oh, my, this is awful. Oh, oh my. If you ask me, I'd say you got off mighty lucky. Oh, lucky? I'd be lying in pain for weeks. Oh, oh. Sure, sure, but there ain't oh. nothing ever so bad but what it could have been worse. You might have broken your neck. Too bad you didn't fix the step. Oh, oh. That mailman say he's come to visit with you. To visit me? Why not? Ain't no law against visiting the sick man, is there? You came to visit me? Why? Well, just combining the little business with pleasure. That's all. First, I got some mail for you. And, um... Mrs. Miller asked me to bring you this. Mrs. Miller? I don't understand. No, I didn't think you would. Well, I, I'd hardly expect her to, uh... To return good for evil? That's not quite what I meant to say. Well, you can put it into any words you like, Mr. Cogswell. But either you live with the golden rule or you don't. So she sent you the roses, and me, I brought you a book. Oh. Thank you. The nabob. What's it about? Well, it's about a man who was so busy making money 
He couldn't find time to enjoy the things it could have brought him. Hmm. Seems like a rather, uh, shall I say, stupid character. Mm, yeah, you could call it that. But then there's lots of foolish people like that in the world. Hmm. That's nice bouquet, ain't it? <laughs> yes, it is nice. Fragrance almost the same as my Hadley's. <laughs> Should be. Comes from your own bush. What? You mean to say... Why not? Would you rather have them blossoms die on their stems than to enjoy them with your own eyes? Me, I think it was a mighty sweet thought. To say nothing of the trouble of making the bouquet. Hmm. Well, be seeing you again, Mr. Cogswell. And, uh, <clears throat> I'll tell Mrs. Miller how you enjoyed the roses. Yes. Such a hurry, boy. Going to Mr. Gilmore's place. He's teaching me to throw a knuckleball. Oh, you and him's getting along nice, huh? Oh, sure. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, good morning, Mr. Clumpet. Any mail for me today? Not today, I'm sorry. You know, uh, things look kind of different around here lately, don't it? Uh -huh. I uh, see that the step's been fixed up. Huh? Yes, Mr. Gilmore fixed a pretty good job, don't you think? Yeah, a mighty good job. That uh, Mr. Gilmore seems like a mighty solid citizen. And I noticed that uh, he and your Bobby kind of taken to each other. Oh, really? I hadn't noticed. Uh, by the way, <clears throat> I dropped in to see Mr. Cogswell. Oh, how is he? Oh, he's fine, fine. And he told me to thank you for them roses you sent him. Roses? But I didn't send him any roses. Oh, yes, you did. I took him over there myself. <laughs> Stopped him, too. Now, whatever possessed you to? Oh. Thanks. I guess I should have thought about doing that myself. You know, if uh, you and some of the rest of the neighbors uh, would send Mr. Cogswell flowers and go to see him now and then, why, maybe... Are you kidding? I know how you feel, but that's a mighty bad feeling. Just like a boomerang. Most times it misses its target, comes right back to hit you smack dab in the face. Oh, sure, Mr. Cogswell sour, but maybe what made him like that was the doings of some other folks who was nasty and mean. Now, me, I'd say a little neighborly love might sweeten him into the nicest man you ever knew. That I'd like to see. Well, there's some good in all of us. Takes very little sometimes to bring it out. Of course, me, I always say it's worth trying. I think you're right, Mr. Clumpet. As a matter of fact, I think I'll pay him a visit. Well, now, that's a right neighborly gesture, ma'am. Be kind of nice if uh, you went along with Mrs. Miller, don't you think? Well, all right, I'll go. <laughs> ah, that's splendid. Splendid. Bye, bye.
tastiest cream chicken I ever ate. Uh -huh. Did you really make it yourself? Uh-huh. I'm glad you like it. I hear it's your favorite dish. Indeed. How would you know? Mr. Clumpet told me. Hmm. That mailman seems to know everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> I should complain when it gets me something like this. Once again, I must say, it's very nice of you. Well, I'd better be going. Goodbye. Bye. Yeah. See you later. And thanks for calling. Oh, uh, Miss Miller. You know, that new tenant, uh, Mr. Gilmore, he was in the scene the other day. Nice fellow, isn't he? You know, I, uh, I think he would enjoy some of this. Well, he, he's already had some. Oh. Come in. Howdy. How is the impatient patient? Impatience correct. I'll certainly be glad to get out of this bed. On second thought? Will I? You know, somehow or other, I can't help but look back on that broken step as a blessing. Since being laid up, I've learned a lot of things. You should have given me that book long ago. That character in it. I'm just like him in my own small way. I can truthfully say I've been just as stupid. Say, you sharpened up mighty fast of a sudden. <laughs> After all this, even a blind man couldn't help but see the light. I shall always remember this. Now at least I can say, I'm awake. Oh, you aren't the only one who was asleep. A lot of us had to be awakened, too. Thanks, it was a wonderful experience. Of course it was. Doing right always is. The thing that I don't understand is why so many people waste so much time and energy doing the opposite. Clumpy, I never realized that being a mailman required so much wisdom. Oh, shucks. You want to know something? Wisdom is only a matter of putting your trust in the Lord. Hadn't you uh, better be getting on home? That uh, certain fellow will be waiting for you. And uh, I don't think uh, you ought to keep him waiting too long, do you? <laughs> oh, I had no idea at the time. But I'll say goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, Mr. Gilmore? I think you'd better be getting yourself a for rent sign ready, because I think you're going to lose one of your tenants. <laughs> <laughs> these roses wherever the lady wishes. Oh, Mr. Cogdell. Yeah? Which house will they want me to put the sign on? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mr. Crumpet. Look at the Hadley roses. You know, I don't understand it, but Mr. Cogswell sure has changed a lot in the last year, hasn't he? Well, it ain't so hard to understand, Bobby. Some folks won't admit it, son. But everybody is hungry for love. And when somebody loves us, we just can't help loving them back. It's as simple as that. Yes, sirree. Long time ago, there was a carpenter who went around telling folks that if they wanted to be happy, they had to love one another. And I reckon he knew what he was talking about because it still works out just exactly the way he said. Don't it? <laughs> 